do them. <laughs> Absolutely do them. Um, they are intimidating when you first hear them um, and you see people who do them really well. You kind of get into the, I don't know if I can do that. Um, but it takes practice and it takes um, like devotion to do them. Like it's one of those things that is very easy to forget to do it for a day and then a week and then you know they're completely gone altogether. But they're such a big component and they're so good. So do them. <laughs> well, I think the mental math aspect of number talks just can be carried out throughout the, mm -hmm. the math classroom. So if you're able to see that flexibility in number talks, you can pull something from that. I think even the strategies that you teach for units down the road, you've already front loaded that information mm -hmm. with number talks. And two, some of the, um, one of the biggest things that teachers complain about is a lot of our kids aren't fluent with their facts. Well, if you want your kids to be fluent with their facts, like, do something about it. Like you can't, you can't just say, go home and practice your facts because it's probably not gonna happen. So it's, it is up to us and this is one of the best ways I think to do that. And I also feel like they're so highly engaging. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're excited every day when it's time for our number mm -hmm. talks. We want our students to feel like that as well. And they're excited. They like to, to share their ideas and show those um, strategies that they have. You know, it's their, it's their time to shine. It's their time to show off. So Absolutely. it's cool to do them. But it's not scary. I think sometimes whenever kids say, I'm going to talk about numbers, they think <laughs> they don't know. But um, it's not scary in that it can be enjoyable. And it's a good time to... To know what other kids know in their brain not on their paper from their brain in their brain and being able to vocalize what they did even if you have a kid that thinks that they're really got it they have to then be able to explain it mathematically and that is powerful for another child who may not understand or does understand but can't verbalize I love it it also helps the student who says they know trying to take the time to articulate what it is that you're trying to share with your classmates so that they understand it is a hard concept. Yeah, it's hard for me. Um, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so for a student to be able to do that, they're developing their own depth of knowledge. I think something else that's, that's important to remember is that they don't take a long time. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a short mm -hmm. activity, they're mental math. And you can always go the next day mm -hmm. and come, come back to it and refer to it and build upon it and it just gets more and more powerful. Yeah. Every day. I think they need to be done school-wide. Um, I think that we have the benefit of knowing about member talks and how to facilitate them now. I don't think that all teachers in, in school or even district know about them. Um, but once we start in our classroom, they need to be able to take that to the next grade level. And if kids were, if our students were coming to us knowing how to participate in a number talk, we wouldn't have to spend as much time making those norms. Yeah, I think that would be really valuable. Because I think that's a huge part of the number talks is it's the procedure. It's the fact that it's quick. It's the fact that you're not letting students use pencils, whiteboards, markers, you know, maybe having them come up to the carpet, having a special area where you come up and like we don't need to bring anything because all we're using is our brains. And so the fact that it's quick and it's short and you as a teacher don't get to use that as a moment to teach something else. I think it's also important that you have the community, mm -hmm. the classroom community that we've talked about in order for them to be successful and for students to feel comfortable sharing. And I think it's going to build really positive students that maybe hated math. It's going to give them an end because maybe that's something that they're really good at and they're going to realize that math isn't just all word problems and There's worksheets. One, one yeah. way. Yes. Team. I think it would be good in the routine for, I think it would build that mental math, but it builds their confidence, confidence in right, other things yeah. too. So. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to know that you can start anywhere, even going back to addition and subtraction. It just depends on where your kids are, um, that there are multiple strategies and you want to try to get them to feel comfortable enough to share theirs, even if they're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and investigate why they're wrong, mm -hmm. and, you know, just that you're trying to get them to reason abstractly and, and be able to do mental computations rather mm -hmm. than having to always be able to put it to paper. So, um, you know, and that there's not always one right strategy yep. and you can you can take somebody else's strategy. I, I thought it was important the other day when somebody said, well, I need time to practice that strategy. Don't just hear everybody's strategies and move on. You know, you may want to the next day say, well, let's try Paige's strategy mm -hmm. that she came up with right. yesterday. Maybe that will work for you. So maybe not just doing one a day, also mm -hmm. maybe spending multiple days on, you know, one strategy. One, yeah. mm -hmm. 
I agree. I think the I think the thing a number talks is that it's all mental. And like yesterday when we were doing that 177 divided by eight or whatever, my first <laughs> instinct was to pick up my pick up my pencil and do it on a piece of paper. And when it's mental, it challenges you to kind of hold information, um, and which I think is learned. Like I think pulling the kids to the carpet and not letting them be anywhere near their pencil or paper is like the first way to start, you know. And then like you said, those various strategies, you know, knowing that just because. You know, you said one strategy and I said one strategy. It doesn't mean we're both right. It doesn't mean we're both, you know, but it allows kids to see that they can solve it different ways and still get the same Yeah, answer. because some of the ones people have been doing, I'm like, oh, okay, well, that actually is more efficient for me. That's right. So I'm going to try that one. It's faster. Yeah, I have to hold as much yeah, information. But I, but I didn't think of it on my mm -hmm. own, you know. Right. I agree. Um, I watched my kids this past year learning mental math strategies and I saw their math take off because they were able to do different stuff in their head. They were able to understand like different little concepts of how to break apart numbers and their multiplying got better, their adding got better. Um, it, would, it really was a phenomenal thing to watch my kids at the beginning of the year with those tens frames and then at the end of the year being able to multiply in their head. Um, I know that it's going to carry on to fifth grade and sixth grade and seventh grade, um, and I know it carries on to real life um, situations too. Because like I know when I'm at the grocery store, Absolutely. I'm looking at different prices and trying to figure out, okay, well if I take off this much money with this coupon, how much would it be? Um, I'll have to pull out my calculator and I have to pull out my phone and figure out what it is. Um, and that that's what I really want for my kids. I want my kids to be able to utilize what I'm teaching them in a classroom, take it to real life examples, um, and that's just one real life example because there's so many. It is the best. I know. Ten to fifteen I know. minutes. <laughs> I love it. Out the block. Um, they're exciting. Yes. Yeah, they're just exciting, and I think it's. Um, I compare it to an icebreaker when you go to a party, you know, and it's just enough to get those kids um, interacting with the teacher and with the numbers, and um, I think it just kind of awakens their brain for the day. And um, it builds their confidence, I think, because everybody oh, has yeah. an entry and access point. Yeah. Who, you know, one student might solve it one way, um, and another student might solve it another way, but everybody has a way that they can usually attack that, um, I that problem. And I think the hard thing is going to be to stop the number top, because yeah. I want to go on, you know, and it's yes. just 10 minutes, that's all. <laughs> yes. I, I, and another harder piece is sometimes figuring out which one's like the, True. the build into yeah. that. Really like them, and they ask for them. You just get the day. Yeah. <laughs>